Alright guys, welcome to part 2 of my Zelda 2 Adventure of Link playthrough. In the last video, we beat Parappa Palace, and now we're headed up to the very northernmost part of Hyrule. This little cave. I'm going to go ahead and just complete the side quests as they come up. I'm not going to hunt down the NPCs that need help and all that stuff. But one of the things that people point to as being so difficult in this game is how um, uh, the poor conveyance, that the game doesn't tell you where you need to go, what you're supposed to be doing, and that's actually not true uh, for the most part. There's almost always an NPC who will point you in a direction, even if it's kind of out of the way, the game is designed for you to talk to every character, go into every house, read every text box. So if you're not doing that, I could definitely see how you could get lost. And because of that, there's no shame in playing with a guide or something like that. But uh, I think a lot of the criticisms are unwarranted for this game. So now that we have the candle, I could have done this beforehand, but I like to do it as a little reward for getting the candle and completing the first palace. Let's head down to this little cave. Right here. And you saw in part one that I went and got that heart container. And in this game, or in this game, in this cave, I will be getting a magic container. Watch, my magic is four blocks. Now it's five. Plus a magic refill. And now we're ready to continue our adventure. And you have these, these random encounters, which are... I've never been a huge RPG guy because of random encounters, but this game does them a little bit better. Ooh, if you hit a fairy one, then there's fairies in it. Refill your health. Uh, a little bit different in that you can see the enemies, but if they hit you while you're on a road, you get this little screen with nothing. So if you're trying to avoid battling, get to a road. Town of Ruto, which was the Sage of the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time. She'll refill your health. And then the old orange ladies refill your magic. And the famous meme character, Error. Alright, continue our way through Ruto. Alright, there she is. Now, these women, I think they're supposed to be, like, like sexy ladies or whatever. Doesn't she look, like, the way her face is shaped, she looks like uh, Olivia Munn to me. Like, I don't know. The first time I saw Olivia Munn, I was like, oh, it's the Zelda 2. And basically what she says is, you saved our trophy. That thing I picked up in that cave up in the north part of Hyrule was a trophy, apparently. And so she will now let me in to the wise man who will give me my next magic spell. jump. If I had spoken to her before I got the trophy, she would have said something along the lines of the trophy being stolen, so it's good to just pick it up on your way. So lady, basket-headed lady, and that does it for Ruto. And next, we're going to be headed south into some caves that uh, this is meant to be a gate. If you don't have the candle, you can't come this way. But uh, when I was a kid, I would just brute force my way through here without getting a candle. Oh god. There we go. Another thing I would do in here is I would use these boomerang guys to practice my shielding. I would just stay in here and just do this. I don't know, when I was a kid, I thought this was fun. Well. But, 
anyways. Sometimes you'll get kind of in a bunch and you can't block them all. There we go. I took a lot of damage doing that, but whatever. I need some health. There's no health drops in this game. It's all based... Oh, God. It's all based on fairies, and later on we'll get a healing spell. More of these little blue bat guys. And these guys, they turn into, like, dragons? I don't know. So here's the first use of the jump spell. And if you're low on health, pop over to the right, and there's a free fairy. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, this game has lives. And if you run out of lives, you get a game over, but you can also find one-ups around the map. I saved them all. So if in your game through gameplay playthrough, you come across a tiny little link doll, ignore it. At least that's that's what I do until it's time to face the final dungeon. Uh, the reason I say that there is because there is one in that area. Um, so now we have two choices. We can either go south into another town. Of course, we have to go across this action screen of a bridge. Or we can go take on Palace 2. I want to take on Palace 2, but before we do, I like to go up into these woods. And this is the first pretty cryptic thing you find. Although there is an NPC pointing you to it. Um, uh, man, it's been a little while, so I don't know exactly where the spot is, but I know I'm close. Oh god. There we go. Ugh. How many of these things am I going to have to do? Uh, basically, there's a bridge in the town that I'm not going to right now that you have to be friends with a guy named Bagu. There it is. You talk to him and he gives you a note or something. Bagu is my name. Show my note to Riverman. Um, Riverman, lamest superhero name. Uh, anyways, so you talk to him and then next time you go to that town, you won't have to, or you'll come to a river and a guy working the bridge will extend the bridge because you know Bagu. So I just knocked that out right now. Boom. Now, if you are having trouble and you don't want to take on Palace 2 yet, it is a good idea to go ahead and go to that village and get the spell from the wise man because it is a very useful spell. But uh, I don't think I'm going to need it, so... be with the crazy amount of damage I've been taking. Okay. Ugh. Oh, come on. Stupid grasshopper thing. I got way hairier than it normally does. Okay. Two one. And a pea bag for two hundo. Get that attack up to three. And you'll find these pea bags in various caves and different action screens and stuff. Uh, and most of them are uh, pretty useful if you get them early enough. Later on in the game, whenever it takes thousands of XP to level up, it's really just not worth digging for them. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get that spell. Just because I'm low on health. There 
There we go. And you walk at like half speed when you're going through. Oh, come on, give me that. Give me that. There we go. Okay, now let's brave the bridge. And I've found that if you just duck as these little bony fish go over your head, they will you will block every single shot they make at you. There we go. This is not normally what I do. This is a bit out of my way, but it seemed to be a little rusty, so I'm going to go ahead and get my next spell. See, and she will tell you that she lost her mirror. And this is pretty cryptic. I, I don't blame anybody for thinking this is unfair. But Link says, I found a mirror under the table. There's a few instances where Link actually speaks in this game. It's pretty interesting. Uh, that, and then, uh, I don't know, if we come across another, I'll point it out, but... Give the purple lady that. And this is one of the most useful spells in the entire game. And as far as I know, that's the only time you find something under a table, so don't worry about checking every table. Alright, that's the life spell. It refills quite a bit of your health. Which is extremely helpful. And so every time you find a red jar, if you have the magic, it's good to refill your health before you know hit the life spell and then pick up a jar. Okay, actually I'm gonna backtrack. Because this town ends in a dead end. Well, I spoke to Bagu, so it won't, but whatever. It's time for the palace. See, like a hundred, like that's a lot right now, but when you need like 6,000 XP to level up, it's not really worth it. What does this bridge do? I don't think I ever go this way. Oh, we got bubbles. simple. And I think this one has a fairy... Yep, sure does. Don't need it. Wow. Wow, I got so lucky. That was insane. step back, and then I don't have to battle anybody. It's not really worth the XP you get doing those battle screens, so it's mostly just a nuisance. And I think this statue, yeah, it has a red potion. So if you're low on health and you have the life spell, quick refill right there. Alright, and for this dungeon... First thing I do is drop all the way down. This one, the, the way the walls are, are designed, man, it can really mess with your eyes a little bit. Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. And got more of these guys. Which, these guys become more and more trivial as you level up your attack. Which, at level... Oh, no. At level three, he went down pretty quick. XP. And you can kind of make this jump. It's actually kind of worth hanging out here and practicing making these jumps. It's basically three blocks high, if that makes sense. Um, which is very... Ugh, it can be difficult to make that jump, and you'll be needing to make jumps like that later on. So it's not a bad idea to practice where you can. Ugh. 
For some reason, the statue doesn't attack you on the way back. Dun, 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 dun. And then we get the same music track again as in pretty much all the dungeons. And then I do this floor next. Bubbles, even though it's probably a good idea that I do. I kind of don't have as much as, it, as much XP as I would like, but I've wasted a lot of time in this video, so I'm just going to push on. Alright, um, Get that queued up in case I need it. But the blue skeletons are the same as the red skeletons, but they jump sometimes, and they have more health. guys respawn. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it uh, because I'm close to leveling up and what you don't want to happen is to make it to the end of the level close to leveling up but not quite and then having to backtrack because you get that free level so it's good to level up like right around finishing the boss and then getting a free level when you place the crystal. So be cognizant of kind of where your XP is and when and where. And I don't think you... Yeah, I think right is blue drops of enemies pop out of them. Anytime you try and go right in this part of the dungeon, it's just dead ends. So don't even worry about it. Free bag. Free shifty. Blue guy. with the life spell and then these unicorn dragon head things if you just walk they'll pass right under you oh man keep overshooting there we go now here's a part where you want to get a little distance from the I think they're called bits these little blobby guys uh, because if you try and jump, they will just knock you into the lava and you'll lose a life for no reason and you'll feel like an idiot. There we go. Alright. Jump slash, jump slash, jump slash. Boom. Shield. Magic. Fight him with a bubble buzzing around. This guy can be kind of hard to catch if you wanted to get these points, so I don't... Uh, yeah. And this will level me up again. And the level cap for all of your different categories, your attack, magic, and life, they're all eight. So we're already making pretty good progress. Magic. So leveling up your magic basically makes it so that your spells require less magic to use, which is super handy. And then this, boom, a lot, uh, magic jar, so I'll go ahead and do that, and that, and then refill it all the way. Go ahead and get these guys too. So this is about as grindy as the game gets for me. I don't like to... Some people have areas of the game that they like to go and just defeat enemies over and over and over again to get more and more XP. I'm not going to do that. I might point out a couple areas that's good for it, but I'm not going to do it. Oh. And in this part, you want to just move through as quickly as you can. You can get trapped in these falling blocks. They'll just stack higher and higher. And if you're in the middle or whatever, it'll, it'll stack higher than you can get through. And it's a huge pain. So now, we get a red one of these guys. Same exact thing. He 
he's just red and does more damage and gives more XP. Oh. Yeah, oh. Piece of cake. That's 200 XP right there. All right, and then we get the glove. Power glove, I guess it is. I'll show you what that does. This is actually something that um, you actually use not in the overworld. Unlike most other items. This will allow you to break blocks. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So if you were to have gotten trapped, you can dig your way out. It doesn't make you hit any harder, which is kind of lame. If you're strong enough to break blocks now, it seems like that would be an increase in strength for you, but whatever. Alright, watch out for that guy. He's going to try and drop fire on you. Yeah. Kind of get used to the timing of how long after you push the attack button Link actually swipes his sword. Because like I said before, he actually wheels back to swing. So. And then this... Oh God. It is possible to make it through here without taking damage, but it's difficult. I used to be better at it, so I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, life will be better. Just kind of muscle your way through there. level. Alright, life. Beautiful. See, I'm already up to 3, 4, 5. So I need a thousand XP. So I'm going to go ahead and kill these guys. Oh, lord. You know, there's a spell for defense, there's a spell for life, there's a spell for jumping, there's all these different spells, but there isn't one for attack. It'd be kind of nice if there was an attack spell. Oh, you jerk. There we go. And also, these bubbles, when they hit you, I believe they drain your magic. hallway especially since it's so long with that pattern rushing by and yeah, it really messed with my eyes. Okay. No potion. getting near the end of this dungeon as well. The first two are pretty short and pretty easy to memorize. Oh. So, we'll get them. these episodes will be a little bit shorter than the later ones, especially the last couple dungeons are very maze-like. Now, a lot of people die going for this. Uh, basically, you just got to kind of not even worth it if you were to die it's like or if you were to not grab it it wouldn't be the end of the world fancy footwork oh, that's not what I wanted the 
XP. I'd like to break a thousand before I beat the boss, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're coming up on him pretty quick. Boom. Yeah, sometimes we get into a good pattern and he won't even get a chance to attack. Alright, it's boss time. <coughs> um... kind of similar to the last guy. You're going to bonk him in the face. He's more challenging than the last one. Uh, when we fought Bojack Horseman. And it reveals, once you hit him, underneath his helmets... Oh god, it's Voldemort. Boom. Boom. Kind of similar to oh, other enemies you've been fighting. Just keep it going. Gotcha. Oop. See, and it would be nice if I could level up again, but I'm not going to go back and grind and bore you guys. I'm just going to go ahead and take my measly few hundred XP here. Alright, another attack. Attack is always nice to get, because it's, it's the most expensive one. And it makes the game considerably easier to manage. And you'll start to notice as you go through that enemies that were giving you trouble before now get knocked out in just a couple attacks. level. Oh, I didn't swing the sword. Okay. I'll notice things like this. You can't get through. Normally, I skip going to this town the first time, so I don't have to go through it twice. But uh, I did this time just because I've been a little rusty, and uh, I don't want to risk dying while I'm recording. So here we go, back into the town. Not much to do in it now that we've uh, we've gotten the, the mirror to the woman and gotten the. the Life spell for her. See, and inside these buildings is where you would talk to people and they would give you hints about the world. And See, and you can also do this. Life. And then talk to her. There you go. That keeps you from having to hunt down. Oh, well, here she is. The, the life lady. See, normally you would come to here and it would be a dead end, but because I know Bagu, you know Bagu. <laughs> then you exit, and he extends the bridge. And it'll be the same thing on the if you had to come back through it the other way. Uh, next, we'll be doing what a lot of people consider to be the uh, first major challenge of the game. We'll be hitting Death Mountain in Part 3. <laughs> 